Okay, so let's take a look at a few things that I like to do when I'm working with masks and shape layers to save me time. Now, to select a mask, of course, you can come up here to the tools, click, and you can choose one of these options from the drop down menu, though that's the slowest way to do it. Now, the shortcut is Q. So if I press Shift Q, I can cycle through the different shapes. But I can also hold down the Alt key or Option on Mac and click on the mask, and that will cycle them as well. And that goes for all of these tools that have a drop down menu. Just holding down Alt and clicking allows you to cycle through them. Okay, so I'm going to choose the ellipse tool. Now, of course, you can double click to apply a mask, or you can click and drag. I'm holding down the Shift key to constrain the shape of this mask. Now, with my finger still on the mouse, if I add the space bar, I can reposition this mask. And this is really handy. I use this all the time. If I add the Alt key, I can temporarily turn off the preview, which is also handy if you want to see behind the mask as you're drawing it. Now I'm going to add another mask here. And for this one, I want to change the mask mode. Now, once again, I still have my finger on the mouse button. If I press the N key, I can change that to none. The S key will subtract. The A key will add. The I key, if I can stretch my fingers across, will intersect, and the F key is difference mode. There's also D for darken, and really stretch for L for lighten, but these are really only relevant when your masks have different opacity. So that's one way to do it, but the fastest way to do it is to use the plus and minus keys. Now keep in mind here, I have to take my finger off the shift key, just for a moment, and I can use the plus and minus keys and just cycle through those till I find the one I want because I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't really know what the look is that I want by choosing the actual name. Sometimes I have to see it. And then once I've done that with my finger still on the mouse button, just hold the shift key again, put the space bar in, then reposition. So by doing it this way, you can really zero in on the look you want up front and not have to come back and keep adjusting the mask. Now, if you want to snap the masks into place, you're not gonna have any luck using the standard snapping features but you can snap masks to guides and the grid. So I'm just going to view my guides and I'm going to turn on guide snapping. And if I grab my selection tool, grab a vertex, I can click and snap it to the points where these guides are intersecting. And if I select it all, hold down the Control and Alt key, Command Option on Mac, and convert those points all at once, I can create a square. This is also handy if you want to snap vertices from one mask to another. So if I grab this mask and just click up here, I can snap that in. And I can slide that down and it still stays snapped to that guide, which is really nice. And the same thing can be done for grid as well. Just go to Remove both those masks. Now the arrow keys are also very useful when you're working with certain masks. If I choose, say, the star tool, and I click and drag, once again, just holding down the shift key and the space bar just to put it within these guides, and keeping my mouse button held down, I can use the up arrow to add points and the down arrow to remove points. And I can use the left and the right arrow keys to change the roundness of the points. There's also the polygon tool. Up and down arrows to add sides. Once again, I can make a triangle that way. And left and right to change the roundness. And remember, this is all being done while I'm keeping the mouse button held down. And also one of my favorites is a rounded rectangle. Click and drag in here. You can see I can snap to these guys, which is nice. Up arrow will increase the roundness and down arrow will decrease the roundness. Left arrow will give me a perfect square and right arrow will give me a perfect circle. And keep in mind also that this works with shape layers. Just delete that one. It's a new shape layer there. Put 
Very, very handy. Now, whilst we're on the subject of changing the mask shape, I just want to show you a little tip I learned many years ago for creating a custom shape by interpolating between two mask shapes. And to do that, I'm going to create a new solid. Just hide my guides for the moment. Just come back to the beginning of the timeline. And I want to create a rectangular mask. Double click. Set a mask shape keyframe by holding down Shift and Alt. Option on Mac. And pressing the M key. Just move ahead a little bit in time. Double click the layer to open up the layer panel. And now I want to target that mask. So I'm going to choose Target Mask 1. Come up here again, and this time I want the Ellipse tool. Click and drag. Just constraining that. And you can see now I've created a second keyframe. And if I just drag, you can see that's interpolating between those two masks. That in itself is pretty handy, but the shape is a little bit weird. And that's because the first vertex isn't lined up. You can see on the circle, the first vertex is at the top. And the first vertex, if you don't know, is indicated by this slightly larger vertex with a stroke around it. So that's on the top for that one. And on the rectangle, it's on the right. And that's giving you that weird shape. Now I can change the first vertex by clicking on a vertex and choosing Mask and Shape Path and choosing Set First Vertex. But in this case, I don't want to change it. I just want to reposition it. So I'm going to double click and just rotate this about 45 degrees. Hit Enter. And now when we preview, you can see I'm getting a much better result. And I remember using this a number of years ago to create sort of an old style TV screen. So handy to know that you can use the target menu in the layer panel to target different masks and create that kind of interpolation. Whether I use the pen tool in Bezier mode or in Roto Bezier mode really depends on what I'm doing. But either way, using modifier keys really saves time when you're drawing masks with the pen tool. Let's take a look. Let's start off in Bezier mode. Now I've already got the pen tool selected. The shortcut for that is G. Just going to zoom in here slightly. Use my hand tool to move around. So I'm going to click to create the first vertex. And if I drag, that's going to create the Bezier handles. Click again. And if I hold the space bar down, I can preview before I place that vertex. If I hold down the Alt key or Option, I can convert that vertex. Make that nice and sharp. Come down, spacebar, once again, drag out a handle, spacebar to reposition, and this way you can be extremely precise. So that's the pen tool in Bezier mode. Let's try it in Roto Bezier mode. So I'm going to select Roto Bezier and do the same thing. So click to set my first vertex. Click again. Now the difference between Bezier and Roto Bezier is that I don't have to hold down the space bar to preview. I can just click and drag. And click again. Now I still hold down the Alt key to convert that vertex. But take a look over here in the info panel. If I click and drag, you can see I can adjust the tension. If I want to create either 0 or 100% tension, I just click with the Alt key held down. And that'll toggle between 0 and 100% tension. That's obviously 100. Alt click again. And just continuing along. to mask out the shape. So spacebar and alt or option, really important modifier keys. So my left hand is basically sitting on the keyboard as I'm drawing the mask. It really takes a bit of practice creating masks using the pen tool. But using those modifier keys saves time when you're initially drawing the masks and I think it's better than coming back and making adjustments later. 
Okay, so let's just close out this section by looking at a couple of shape layer specific time savers. I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool, click and drag out a shape layer. Now by default that shape layer's path isn't editable. If I come and twirl down ellipse 1 and then right click on ellipse path 1, I can choose convert to bezier path. Now if I grab the pen tool, I can adjust the vertices. If you know you want to adjust the shape layer, it's actually faster just to grab the tool, hold down the Alt or Option key and drag. And that creates a Bezier path by default. If I press SS on the keyboard, that's going to reveal the path. And with the word path selected, grab the pen tool. And I can adjust that. So holding down Alt or Option just saves a little bit of time. Just going to delete that again. Now when you create a shape layer, clicking and dragging, by default, your anchor point's not going to be in the center. There is actually a preference to fix that. Just open up my preferences. You can see here under general, there's a preference for center anchor point in new shape layers. That's off by default. Just turn that on. Delete this one. Click and drag. And that pops that right in the center, which is really handy. That was something that really annoyed me in the past with shape layers. Of course, if you haven't got that turned on and you've drawn a shape layer, you can use Control alt home to center the anchor point. Okay, so lastly, you'll notice that this shape layer has a gradient. I'm just going to delete this. Before shape layers, when I wanted a full frame gradient, I would create a new solid and use the gradient ramp effect. But that's limited because the gradient ramp effect only has two colors. To create a more flexible full frame gradient, you can use shape layers. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool, double click, and click and drag out my gradient. I'll just click on the word fill here and I'll change this to a linear gradient. Okay, maybe make some adjustments. So with shape layers, of course, you've got more than one color. Just going to click on Edit Gradient here, and I can add as many colors or shades and tints as I want. So don't disregard shape layers. It's easy to forget them, but they can be really useful and a lot more flexible and versatile when you're creating these full frame gradients, or any gradients for that matter.